In today's edition of Docplex's KOL Interviews, we have with us Dr. Deepak Gobil, who is a senior consultant in the Department of Surgical Gastroenterology at Apollo Hospitals. He has a vast experience of 34 years and has also specialized in GI cancer surgery, laparoscopy, pancreatobiliary and colorectal surgery. He is the member of Indian Association of Surgical Gastroenterology and Association of Surgeons of India. He is an expert at the complex techniques of robotic colorectal surgery and complex HPB surgery and is the President's Appreciation Awardee. Thank you, sir, for the interview. Dr. Govil, we see that there is a rise in GI problems in India. What do you think is the reason behind it? I, I in fact, agree with your uh, uh, statement that there is a rise in GI problem, and especially GI cancer cases we are seeing much more often than we were seeing earlier. And these, uh, the basic reasons, I think, are the changing lifestyle patterns, the changing dietary patterns. They are significantly responsible for these sort of situations. Because in the West, uh, these colorectal cancers especially has a very high incidence. In our country, the incidence is not as high, but it is increasing at a rapid rate. And we today are seeing very young patients uh, suffering from colorectal cancer. And there is a significant impact of the lifestyle, the fast food, junk food, the uh, smoking and other uh, alcohol intake. All those things are increasing. In fact, uh, the pattern of our life is uh, changing more towards the Western lifestyle. And probably that is one of the major factors which is influencing the increase in uh, the GI and cancer cases. So in, in case of colorectal cancer, where should the treatment begin? What phase? What should be the symptoms that should be easily recognizable and helpful to the medical community? I think it is very important for colorectal cancer that we detect these cases early. And that is only possible if our doctors are also aware about, the, about these cancers. Because a lot of these patients have a very common problem which is bleeding per rectum. Bleeding piles is one of the common things which you must have heard of from anybody. It's so common that every third person is suffering with some amount of bleeding from piles. And it's treated as piles by most of the doctors. But we don't investigate them. And we often find that these patients are being treated for piles, but they ultimately land up and are found to have a colorectal cancer. So they need to be showing to the doctors and the doctors also should be investigating them thoroughly rather than just treating them uh, as a routine case of piles. So I think this is one of the important factors. Plus, another important thing is GI related uh, problems are very non-specific. Uh, there is some discomfort in the abdomen. There is some loss of weight, some uh, loss of appetite. These are the basic general symptoms of GI cancer, which are often not uh, realized by the patient so seriously and in uh, and the local doctors also don't take them so seriously and a lot of these times especially the loss of weight is very important because if these are taken seriously and investigated we often find that they uh, turn out to have some uh, specific organic disease or a GI cancer which is uh, missed by the local doctor sometimes. So could you talk about the uh, techniques we use in colorectal surgery and the benefits um, of this technique? The techniques uh, for colorectal surgery are gradually evolving today and we've really uh, evolved significantly into the techniques and the surgeon is an important factor in the treatment of these uh, colorectal cancers because the kind of surgery he does has a lot of impact on the overall outcome of the patient, whether there's a, there'll be early recurrence in these patients or uh, the overall survival also depends on the kind of surgery he has uh, been offered. And surgical techniques can be done. Uh, one is the technique and the approach is important. Like 
Previously, we were doing an open operation right from top to bottom, and we were having a colostomy in majority of the patients, which are very uncomfortable for the patients. But nowadays, with laparoscopy coming in, with robotics coming in, these things have changed over a period. And patients are able to, in fact, go back home on the fourth or fifth day after surgery and go back to work within two weeks and doing almost everything. And we are able to avoid a stoma in a lot of these patients because of these laparoscopic and robotic techniques. So I think robotics specifically has uh, is now emerging out to be quite important uh, in the outcome of these patients. And we are uh, able to offer a good uh, result and uh, overall uh, survival for these patients. Are there any challenges that the doctors face, to, uh, face okay. while uh, performing colorectal surgery? Actually, uh, there are a lot of challenges because mainly the rectal surgery, which is deep in the pelvis, that if you do it in an open technique, uh, it's very difficult to manipulate and do an osmosis or do uh, surgical techniques in depth of pelvis. And especially if the pelvis in a male patient is a narrow pelvis, so you don't have enough space. And robotics uh, gives you a magnified view of that area. The instruments by which you are operating are very small and have a almost 360 degree endorist movement. So you can suture it this way or that way. So you have all the freedom while you are operating robotically or even laparoscopically. Uh, ro robotics is even better than laparoscopy. But robotics gives us a uh, much uh, a wider view of a very narrow area and we are able to uh, where the margins are important like if we have a one centimeter margin the outcome is much better if we don't get a margin from a cancer patient then the chances of recurrence are much higher so with robotics and other things in very low cancers rectal cancers we are able to save the sphincters we are able to avoid a stoma for these patients so these definitely make a difference for the patient can you talk to us about um, a challenging case uh, that you may have seen in the past yeah there are a lot of in fact in india nowadays we are seeing a lot of younger patients coming out uh, coming with this colorectal cancer uh, in fact there is one patient who came from Aligarh and he was a, he's a 30 years male who just as I told you earlier came with bleeding piles was diagnosed of bleeding piles and he came to us and we as a routine for these patients do a colonoscopy and we found that there was a cancer in this patient and cancer at a very low area so that uh, in fact at any place uh, that patient would have lost his normal anal passage and a permanent stoma but we offered him robotic surgery and we said that we probably would be able to save his stoma if we do a robotic surgery and we did robotic surgery we were able to just we gave a temporary stoma to him for two months after that two months we closed the stoma and the patient is now doing absolutely fine he's back to his work he's joined his duties in fact he comes frequently to meet us and wish us uh, uh, on all the festivals and everything. So it's a very gratifying thing that with a young patient, we are able to save the uh, stoma for that patient and we are able to give a good uh, recovery to this patient. So, um, so basically, we need to educate our patients very well on certain That's symptoms. Right. Um, do you think, uh, talking about raising awareness, do you think Docplexus as a community is able to build um, that sort of uh, awareness among doctors? I think it is important to build awareness among doctors because a lot of doctors also, like as I told you earlier also, bleeding per rectum, the minor symptoms have to be taken seriously. and. Uh, we cannot just because we have to realize between the non-specific symptoms and specific symptoms of the patient that is very important because uh, these uh, loss of appetite just abdominal discomfort every patient perceives these non-specific uh, specific symptoms very differently and if we just ignore these symptoms keep re keep treating these symptoms in a non-specific manner and symptomatically we sometimes land up with an advanced disease which is almost untreatable so i think there is a role uh, for the organizations like doc and other organizations 
to inform doctors also to inform patients also that uh, they are able to identify the disease early and then obviously these things can be treated much better do you think uh, online network communities for doctors like DocPexis are able to create a knowledge sharing environment that is actually beneficial i think it is very important for uh, these networking uh, uh, organizations to develop because uh, the lot of doctors also are not very much aware of uh, some specific things like in gi disorders like in piles as i told you we have to get a colonoscopy done that has to be hammered on to all the general practitioners not only surgeons so the basic general practitioner who's seeing the patient at the local level should know that yes these are the steps so i think for the common problems uh, they need to identify and uh, it's only because uh, and just like robotic colorectal surgery in fact i am sure half of the local practitioners would not know that robotic colorectal surgery exists because robotics is mainly considered as a surgery which was initially started for prostate but it is now uh, being utilized for other things also which a lot of people are not aware of only these organizations can help uh, people to know that yes these are available and they can be offered to patients and the advantages and dis disadvantages of these are uh, can be uh, informed to the patients right at the local level thank you so much dr gobel for this insightful discussion thank you